Hello and welcome to today's historic best of three deck tech and gameplay video on what I'm calling Wraith Scales, which is basically a combination of hardened scales and its associated little payoff pieces that I like, like Tenacious Pup and Winding Constrictor, as well as the, the star creature of the deck is all nine copies that we can have of the Nazgul. The Nazgul individually are fine creatures, but they really value having, you know, other race in the deck. As evidenced by the fact that whenever you, the ring tempts you, you basically 1-1 one, one counter all the race on your board, as well as the ring increasingly tempting you to give you just a load of generally good bits of value. Also has to be said that Realm Walker, since it is a changeling, counts as a sort of honorary wraith, which is nice since we do need a good density of wraiths for this goofy little uh, but effective little system to work. Also a couple of Grackmaws and Midnight Reapers to hold it together. Same thing with Collected Company since the majority of our deck, as you can see, is three drops and it's just a generally good card and a kind of creature heavy list that's dense on three drops. Admittedly, you don't have to have Collected Company if you you know if you don't own it and you don't have the, the rare wild cards. The deck will still work it's just going to be, you know, a notch down. The land base, entirely self-explanatory. I'm running shock lands. The, uh, what do you call them? I call them pain lands, even though they're sort of not. But basically, the modern horizon lands and pathways to make sure we hit the ground running and often. As well as some other just generally nice cards like Besaju's and Castle Lockthwains, amongst others. Just to get some more utility out of the land base. Sideboard relatively self-explanatory cards scavenging ooze for graveyards tainted remedy for opposing life gain decks crippling fear for a board wipe that is usually one-sided assassin's trophy for more general removal terra sunder is usually the your artifact and enchantment hate but of course if you need it to you can always kick it to get rid of just non-land permanents instead the reason why we're running tear asunder and assassin's trophy is just Things like the One Ring just generally <laughs> making Historic way less fun than it should be. And finally, running a couple of Carnage Tyrants. Well, yes, this is not a Collected Company hittable spell. We need something to go into like the blue-white controls of the world that have lots of you know uh, counter spells and single target removals, as this deck is weak to both of those things. And that is the basics of the deck tech. Don't forget to like the video if you like it. Subscribe if you like my grab bag of content and would like to see more in the future. And if you have any sort of, you know, questions like, hey, I don't have collected company, you know, what should I run? Go ahead and leave them down in the comments below. With that all out of the way, we'll go on to game number one. And game number one with our little Wraith Scales list. We'll go ahead and keep this. Granted, it doesn't have a one drop, but it's good enough that we're not going to look at Gift Horse in the Mouth. And since we don't have anything to do on turn one, we'll just play a tomb and pass. I would say this is might be some domain list kind of thing. Ooh. I have been thinking if there's like a, a better adventure deck now floating around, and I think that's gonna be what I'm gonna test on next, after this one, of course. But that also doesn't necessarily promise anything, so you know, don't get your hopes up at home. There might be nothing there and it might suck. <laughs> We'll go ahead and play our... We played our Swamp, and now we're just going to pass, leaving the Orcish Bowmaster open. If we need it. Beadstock Giant. We might just do that. Maybe we will. Like some Teamer uh, Adventure deck would be cool. Anywho, go ahead and Bowmaster our opponent, since they are kind of popping off and getting all the lands of the world. We're in a very good spot, it has to be said. Nothing else next turn. We can always just say play a forest and maybe play. Uh... Eh, yeah, we'll play a Nazgul probably. And yeah, now we have another Naz Nazgul. Yeah, 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 yeah. We'll do that. Uh, go ahead, play a Nazgul. Uh, we'll make our we'll make our orc army become a legendary. We want to keep our bowmaster, especially with the edge wall innkeeper floating around if they want to sort of do what their deck wants to do. They might even take this trade just so they don't grow my Bowmaster. 
And actually, now that I think about the Bowmaster, and we have a moment where our opponent's kind of in the build-up phase. A nice little, uh, oh, this is awesome. We'll take that. A nice perk of Bowmaster is that while it itself is not, you know, uh, a 1-1 one -one counter creature, if that makes sense, the army it creates does use 1-1 one -one counters, which is just, you know, a little bit of extra enjoyment. Now, if you cast a creature that has an adventure... Okay, I misunderstood that. It's still good, it's just less good than I thought. Go and play another Nazgul. Again, probably make our Orc army. Our ring bearer. And then just hit with everything else but the Bowmaster. Another uh, perk to... Hang on, let me see what I'm going to get rid of. We'll get rid of the Reaper. We have enough card draw. We're fine. Uh, another perk to the Nazgul's is the Death Touch that it, you know, it does have, so it can fight big creatures like your Beanstalk Giants are... God, they are popping off. Like your Beanstalk Giants are, you know, Primeval Titans if you're playing against Gate decks, stuff like that. Or it can just, you know, chump if you need it to and always make a good trade. My god. I mean... Like... Okay. Ah, gotcha. Okay. Like, they're doing a lot of stuff, but they also might just kind of die. Okay, they're... They're stalling. I, I like our opponent's deck. I don't know if there's anything there, but I like it. We'll go ahead and play a Winding Constrictor first. Play another Nazgul. Um... Ah, what do we want to... We'll do the Winding Constrictor. I kind of don't want to draw right now. I like the cards in my hand. Uh, there's not draw spells. Admittedly, they can just chump with the 1-1 the one -one token, which isn't great. Okay, what are they going to... They, they've ramped a fuckload. And, of course, Ugin. Okay, yeah, there's... <laughs> <laughs> we know when it's over. We had we did pretty good. Admittedly, they just ramped really early, and we didn't have a really efficient way to sort of interact with that. And honestly, I don't think we do. We I think we're just going to run it again and just try and mulligan more efficiently. You know, maybe mulligan down to f six for like a one drop. And just, you know, hope we find it. Since I imagine that game is pretty simple, you know, or a pretty usual occurrence for them, where they just ramp a fuckload early. One landers, get rid of that. Again, I wanted to... I wanted to search for a one drop, but I'm not going to go to five. That would impact my win rate a little too much. So much like last game, we'll go ahead and just play an overgrown tomb. If they don't get the little uh, artifact thing that like copies adventures, like we're in a much better spot. I think we're going to Winding Constrictor, actually, setting up for a Nazgul play next turn. We just want to get as much stats on the board as, as early as we can, and this will help our Nazgul get bigger faster. What? Yeah, your Stomp won't do it. Well, there you are. That's a, a, th that's a good question. I think we're going to play the Besaju, play a Hardened Scales... Attack with the Winding Constrictor and keep open a Bowmaster for the end of their turn. I know I just talked about wanting to like get as much damage on the board, but I think this is one of those moments that I have discovered in testing with this deck. When you have to take a turn off of like developing a scary board to get a like an even scarier board, if that makes sense. I got the Lucky Clover, which isn't great. Did they play a land? I don't think they did. Okay. This is, this still works. We can use the Bowmaster to get rid of one of the tokens. It, granted, not both of them. He's that. Go ahead and go to my turn. Get our little sack land or whatever you want. What is this cycle of land called? Whatever. I'll figure that out before the next time I use one of these things. Go ahead. Play a Nazgul. Uh, go ahead and put on the Winding Constrictor. Again, leave the Bowmaster alone. I'd like to keep...
keep that. Let's see, what are they going to do for four mana? They could play like a red sweeper if they get another red source. But they're not, which is good. They haven't played their beanstalk giants to get the, the ramp they need. Although if they do, dear god, we're in trouble. In that case, I think we're just... Okay, they can't have stomp because they tapped red to do it, so that's good. So I think we can just sort of freely play another Nazgul. They could have a counter spell, maybe, or like a, a, a brazen borrower bounce would suck. Yeah, that'll do it. That really, really, really sucks. God damn. Uh, okay, yeah, I gotta get rid of the chump blocker, otherwise it's just not gonna work. Go ahead and play the hardened scales again. Credit given to our opponent, though. This is going very well for them. I don't think they've ran any, like, new ones. We're gonna get rid of the Winding Constrictor. Any of, like, the new adventure cards, but I don't know... I haven't, like, really taken a good look at all of the new adventures from Wilds of Eldrain. But they might be good. You never know. Okay, there's a Beanstalk Giant, so they're gonna ramp a fuckload. And a nice little, uh bonus of the Fertile Footsteps adventure is that the lands do come to play untapped. Oh my god. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. Two cards hand, three, a Lovestruck Beast. To be fair, I, this, I haven't run against a deck like this in what? Like many, many, many months. I enjoy it. I'm, I'm in it. I think we will go ahead and play the Nazgul. Our window is very fastly closing. I would not be surprised if they have, like, a Ugin in hand. Sure, we'll just name one of them. Kind of doesn't matter. The pup is pretty low impact, and sadly, we don't have the greatest amount of way to push through with our big boys. So, yeah, they're just going to jump block. Oh, we're going to force him to sack that 1-1 one, one <laughs> creature that died. Only one token that died. We can play another Nazgul next turn. And to be fair, even if I lose this game, the deck has kind of done what it wanted to do. I just, you know... Or, has done... Yeah, yeah, done what the deck wants to do, even if I haven't won. They have a sweeper or something fucky. I mean, I guess they could have, like, a stomp or something. Yeah, but there's, there's something here. Let's see, there would have been six, five. Okay, maybe there's an argument that I don't take that block there, but, like, he's also, yeah, still going to get to just chump block, so kind of doesn't matter. But there's an argument to be made that that's a bad call. Uh, I, I can admit that. Admittedly, we are forcing our opponent to block, which is very nice. If anything gets through, they just die, so really it's uh, just a battle to make them find whatever removal spell or... Brazen Borrower style card they have. Although, now that I think about it, I wouldn't have been able to get through even if I had taken the damage, because they probably would have just played enough creatures to block my three creatures anyway. So I feel a little less bad about taking that. Still probably a mistake on my part, but I know I'm at least happy that I didn't get, like... I didn't, like, throw away Lethal or anything. Uh, let's see, they have, yeah, one card in hand, the Brazen Bar that can only block. Alright! <laughs> we take those! And yeah, I mean, this is one of those decks where you kind of can't really interact. I mean, there are, I suppose, you can't, of course you can interact by running interaction spells, but like, really it's them copying all of their uh, adventurers with the charm thing, whose name I forgot again. And I don't really have ways to interact with that, so you just accept that weird matchups like that are going to happen. Also, no lander. <laughs> um, I don't like that. Go ahead and throw the Shire back. Shire is a nice way to gain a little bit of life, as we can play pretty fast and loose with our life total on this list. Oh, that's way better. Go ahead and play a Beseju. Play a Beseju. There we go. Playing the Tenacious Pup. Which might be one of my favorite alchemy cards. It's like just a really good all-around creature that doesn't see as much play as I would like it to. Although, you can make an argument that it's best in, like, counter-style decks. So I don't, I wouldn't be entirely... Or I wouldn't entirely begrudge 
someone for thinking otherwise. Um, they didn't play the card draw, dude. So I think we're just going to play a Swamp and play a Winding Constrictor. Granted, it, it's not uh, the best use of the Tenacious Puff little buff, but it's not bad either. Like, we take those. He did have a stomp. But that's, like, fine. I mean, he saves a damage, has to be said. He did take a turn off, so he's not going to be able to block easily. I th think... Yeah, we'll play the pathway on black. Playing a Nazgul. And we'll make the Winding Constrictor our ring bearer. This will also give us a legendary creature, so our Baradur, or whatever, however you pronounce it. It's been a while since I've watched the movies. We can come in and play untapped, so we can actually make use of it next turn. I mean... Oh, that sucks. Wait, that sucks, but do I care? Our plan remains the same. I mean, my, my stuff's gonna die to the Storm's Wrath, it has to be said. But, like, I don't think I care. I just, like, let him do it, of course. And then at the end, ter end of their uh, turn, I could just play two Bowmasters and, like, sort of continue the pressure. Granted, might not be enough. Has to be said. Okay, he can... Yeah, he can do the math where he can play a basic and still do the sweeper. Does have the two red open to do it. Yeah. I mean, it, like, when I say we don't... I don't care about the, the sweeper, I mean, it's not, like, great. I wish I, you know, I wish my board was still alive. But it's not, like, an immediate scoop fest kind of thing. see what we draw. A peatland is very bad. Um, I guess we're just going to immediately crack that for a card. One reason why I do love those lands. Well, that's useful. <laughs> okay, if we don't draw anything, then we're, like, in real trouble. Has to be said. Uh, oh, boy. That helps. That that helps. Uh, play a Peatland. Playing a Midnight Reaper. Honestly, I might as well just crack it immediately. We're in a very bad spot. We, we need some gas. And Haskell's getting there. Has to be said. Oh, boy. Okay, so we can play the lands off of that. My god. To be fair, our opponent is just, like, straight up doing a good job, so I can't really begrudge him. The Midnight Reaper... Blah, 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 the Midnight Reaper dies immediately, which isn't great. But we do get a card draw out of it, so it does replace itself, so it's not the worst thing in the world. Uh, take the five. Might as well. Hardened Scales is helpful. In that case, I'm gonna... With that inner tapped... Play a Hardened Scales. And then realize I should have played it untapped so I could play the Windy Constrictor. I'm an idiot. <laughs> the second I, like, click the action, I realize what I had done. Um, guess we'll make the army our ring bearer. And to be fair, there's an argument that made to be made that this is, like, the more aggressive play since our, our time is coming to an end. Yeah, it's not going if our opponent manages to go and play like an Ugin, I think we just scoop it. Granted, and I'm not like mad or upset. Like, our opponent, you know, admittedly a bit of an old school deck, but like, not one that I've never faced before. There was a. Oh, there it is. Uh, I don't think he has it, though, to play. It's just one that hasn't been played in like a while. And I don't think they've played like a single new card. And I don't know if that speaks to the lack of like good, you know, valuable uh, adventure cards are just like speaking to the, or if it speaks to the person's like collection, and not like in a derogatory way, just, you know, some people don't have every card, on, you know, under the sun, kind of thing. Um, I don't think there's any way I win next turn, and if he plays the Ugin, we just die. One of the cons of 
uh, one of the, yeah one of the cons of being a collected company deck is that usually it's kind of helpful is that usually your the majority of your deck is real low to the curve so it doesn't take an Ugin a whole lot to sweep everything you have I guess we play the windy constrictor I I I guess we attack because there's a world in which he doesn't block and we can like be cute and get a win. But yeah, I say he's sorry. Let's let's not be rude. They are making the correct play and hedging their bets because they know they've turned the corner more or less. And yeah, they 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 play the Ugin if they have a brain. They sweep my board and I just die. Even if they don't, I know I'm dead. And it doesn't have anything to do at all with the fact that I'm cooking dinner at the moment and I need to go stir it. But still, a pretty good you know showing for the deck and it. Even though it was a defeat, it did show what the deck wanted to do, you know. Play creatures early on, get them big with 1-1 counters, and get a lot of those said 1-1 counters to make those creatures even bigger than they would normally be. Now, on to game number two. And game number two with our little Wraith Scales list. And this is a perfect opener. We have a nice curve of things to do. As for Sentinels, fine. We don't mind that. We will go ahead and shock in the Overgrown Tomb, playing a Tenacious Pup. Sweetheart, I love you, but maybe right now isn't the best time to hang out with the dead. Yeah, maybe the cat dead is, is Occupado doing something. Yeah. Oh, dude, you've chosen, like, the worst time. I love you. I love you so much. And we can, like, totally hang out later. Oh, you want to come hang out? Okay, we can be... Lap cats are cool. I apologize. Um, we will go ahead and I guess play a swamp and just get rid of their Esper Sentinel with our Bowmaster. Granted, we haven't seen enough of their deck to make any sort of informed call. They played a good creature land and, a, like, the best white one drop in the format. That sucks, but it's, like, not the worst thing. Uh, I think we'll play a forest, and actually, I think we'll play a Realm Walker naming Wraith. Because they are, admittedly, they have missed a land drop, but yeah, we take those. This will also let us, you know, effectively net some cards by not burning the ones in our hand and burning the ones off the top of our library. They did find their second land, and they clearly had two one drops, so they're not, you know, hating it that much. Um, I think we'll just play the Shire since we can't do anything else anyway. Playing a Bowmaster to get rid of their Fencing Ace, which is a card I didn't expect to say today. Oh, come on, don't leave. Okay. There's an argument that I want to bring in the Crippling Fear, but I haven't seen enough. But if I lose the game, it's probably going to come in. So, in the meantime, we're just going to run the deck again. Because they didn't appear to be going that wide that I lacked the ability to deal with. Granted, maybe they're like some, like, Sigarda's aid, like, equipment thing, and, like, the fence is, you know, a real, like, source of, like, oh god, damage. Very possible. But, ugh, pardon the burps. Anywho, my, my brain trying to focus on this and my food and the cat in my lap. Is, is becoming overloaded a smidge. So I'm going to use that as an excuse for any potential misplays I might make. Oh, come on, opponent. Please be here. I would... Ar I mean, I'm happy you kind of scooped when you did because I need the footage, but even in last game, you, you scooped way too early. You were totally fine. Uh, this is a one-lander, so we're going to throw that mofo back so fast. Two-lander... That's fine. No one drop, but it's good enough that we're not going to look a gift horse in the mouth. Got some Bowmasters. Didn't play anything on turn one, though granted they could have another portable hole and just not have the targets. They probably have a land in their hand, which is what I'm guessing is taking them a while. Copper Coat Vanguard. I said Mono... Ooh, Mono White Humans. Uh... I'm an idiot. Why didn't I play... I thought... Yeah. 
Remember how I talked about my brain being overloaded? Eh, there, there's a good <laughs> dem demonstrable way of showing that. It is. It's mono-white humans. This is awesome. I don't know if it's good, but I am in it. Um, It's Ward 1, 2. That is fascinating. Okay, so yeah, we made a wrong call. We needed to bring the, the crippling fear in. In that case, we're just going to try and play creatures and stem the bleeding. Also, missing a land drop isn't great. We don't like those. Thought, oh my, yeah, okay. Yep, Thalia is lieutenant. This is a mono-white humans list. But I do enjoy that. Mono-white, for, for whatever reason, just, like, does not see, in my, in my experience, my god, any real decks in the format. No, we're dead. And, I mean, like, I understand that Mono White's probably the weakest. <sighs> that's cool. The weakest, like, single color for Mono decks, and that's, like, probably more a function of that. We're just gonna scoop. <laughs> we don't like that. But, as I say every video, my time is very short, and uh, provided, you know, this one isn't shorter, we'll just have to take whatever footage we can get. Uh, bring in Crippling Fears. Honestly, Collect Companies are probably going to go out for a couple Assassin's Trophies. I think we need to play the role of a more controlling deck, even though this deck isn't, like, you know, it is an aggressive deck, so it's not the best at that. But I, 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 I am okay with that logic. Might be wrong, as I'm wrong about many things in life. This is pretty good, yeah. Lands, a curve, play the Overgrown Tomb, untapped, play the Tenacious Pup, next turn, have a Winding Constrictor, if nothing else, have another one, start getting that boy, uh, bad boy online, Portable Hole, I mean, that's fine, don't mind that, uh, yeah, play one Winding Constrictor, Nothing else. Maybe spend next turn playing another Winding Constrictor and just kind of setting up. Because they haven't shown a whole lot of, like, hard removal, so I'm a little concerned about, like, how much mileage this Midnight Reaper is going to get. Eey. Oh, boy. Uh, yeah. I think the plan remains the same, largely. Play another Winding Constrictor and just pass. We can attack relatively free, although if they play like a Thalia's Lieutenant, this Fencing Ace is going to get really big, really fast. Or that Copper Coat Ward Buffer Human Dude would also suck. But, uh, oh, it's not any better. Um, opponent made the correct call. We'll go ahead and play Peatland. Um, yeah, just play a Nazgul. We don't really have an option here to do much else. We'll likely name the weaker of the two Winding Constrictors and hope that they eventually grow the... No attacks. Hope that they eventually grow the Fencing Ace so that I can attack with the Winding Constrictor relatively for free. I'm happy to see our... our ugh, my god. Yeah, we're, we're in some, some trouble. Uh, they're not attacking those. So we take those. I guess we can. Yeah, we can sacrifice a peatland and see what we draw. Sure. Yeah, play the Bardur and a Midnight Reaper. Uh, we can attack since now the fencing ace is too big to block the. Ring bearing winding constrictor, which is a sentence that makes sense. And we take those, that's free damage. Looking really hard for uh, an assassin's trophy because that fencing ace is getting really big. Or, you know, uh, a crippling fear. We'll take that too. Swi okay. To be fair, their list has been pretty budget friendly, and actually, I think the lieutenant and the. the lieutenant, the sentinel. And that one cave of the Frost Dragon are the only rares I've seen.
go ahead and block with the Midnight Reaper, since we're not going to get that much more use out of that card. Grackmaw's nice, but like very much so not what we need. I think we're going to sack the other Peatland. Oh, thank God. It's not going to get rid of the board entirely, but like, don't really have an option. Yeah, play a Swamp. Yeah, Swamp. Play a Grackma. Uh, I think we just attack, except the fact that the Fencing Ace is going to be very big and scary. Um, aren't race will go 3-3. Three, three. So my board will live, it has to be said. I can chump with the Grackma and still like retain a body. Which is kind of nice. It might actually be the right thing to do. Luckily, my Crippling Fear will get around that, and we're guaranteed jumping. Be nice to your sister. Oh, yeah, we're, we we jump block all day. It's, like, not even close. Also, a very real chance that if we don't, we just die. We let the Thalia's Lieutenant through, I don't believe. Yeah, you would never give that up. You, you have tricks in your hand. Yeah. We take those. Uh, I guess in the off chance they have like a... Uh, what's that card? The white mana one... Mana like leak counterspell thing. Mana type. We'll play the land just in case. Crippling fear. Naming wraiths. Everything else gets real small. Go ahead and swing with what we can. Actually... We're going to leave the Grackmaw token. We might want to block with that again. No point in attacking with the Constrictor. That doesn't have any, you know... Uh, what's the word? Any attack at that particular point in time. Still have a good amount of cards in their hands. They could pull this out. Come on. Or you could, you know... I what? What? Recommission. Return target artifact to creature card, mana value three less, graveyard battlefield, creature enters the way, one one can that's kind of interesting. I don't know if that's good, but that's interesting. And we have to block, otherwise we die. My god, they built that board up fast. Uh yeah, we yeah, it's not even close. Play a peat land. Assassin's Trophy on the Fencing Ace. And we happily pay the ward cost of one. Because if we don't, we die. Uh, play a Grackmaw also after this. And I guess if they have that mana tithe up, then we've just been mana tithed. Uh, go ahead and attack. He has to block. Otherwise he dies. Does jump block, so we're in a good spot. I really, I sincerely, I love both of our opponents' decks today. They've been like genuinely very interesting and things I haven't seen in a very, very long time. And, I, and that's why I'm gonna, happy that I lost the first game, because as you can see, I am platinum one. But I like don't, my God, I don't actually want to go to diamond. And you might even notice this in certain videos where I am diamond or higher rank, dude. People are like, they don't they don't experiment at all, in in the, uh, we'll say the above fifty percent range if that makes sense. People don't try shit. Um, I guess we could play the Shire. We can crack our Peatland. There's, there's a possibility that they have some sort of removal spell. Eh, Winding Constrictor's not bad. We'll take that. Uh, uh, I think I just attack with everything. We're like getting to a point where if he doesn't, then he just dies. I'm sorry. Combat, oh damn, is that we've got two you and creatures you control by creatures this turn, but you can still deal damage. Wait, two and buy, right? Two you, no, that. 
and all combat damage that will be up to you and creatures you control this turn by creatures. Yeah, but as I say, you, my creatures can still very much die. Okay, that's... Okay. That's that's fine. There's, they stalled for a turn. Nothing else at the end of their turn. We can always get a food with our Shire here. As for Sentinel... If they attack, are we... Why would you... What are you doing? I... What? Okay, in that case, we're gonna... Why? Yeah, okay. I would argue that that was a bad hit. Don't do that. Y you didn't even threaten lethal. I mean, okay, to be fair... Hell, I've made mistakes this video. It's, it's not fair of me to pile on my opponent. But, like, they, they could have very easily just set and stalled. I guess grab a forest. Kind of doesn't matter. I get rid of the vanguard, which is massive. And I think I just kill him, because he can only block one thing, right? Yeah. I mean, we'll take those. Good game from our opponent, though. And their deck is, like, sincerely very good. And honestly, they fumbled once. It happens to everybody. I don't mean to, like, pile on and be a jerk about it. Oh, that's right. I don't kill him. Ain't that a bitch. I was so... prepared to shit talk. I deserve that. That's, that's what I get for talking mad shit. I didn't check the math. I just assumed. Like a maroon. Uh... Sure. Well, hold on. Wait a second. Okay. Yeah! Er, uh, well, no. They were... Okay, no, I could have, I, I would have, yeah, when he killed it, I would have just made a, okay, he kills this, even if he attacks, I can just take the damage. Once my creature dies, I can, at the, uh, basically after the attack, I can make a whatever sized, uh, a mass orc, because a creature died. That would mean that even if he kept the fencing ace back, I would have two attackers to attack through and get the win that way. But we take those. And again, very good decks from our opponent. From our both of our opponents, and very good games from both of our opponents. And honestly, the video did a pretty good job of showing what the deck's, you know, supposed to do. Granted, it's a hardened scales list, and hardened scales as a deck archetype is one of my favorite, like, mechanical themed decks to always do when I've done loads of them and I'm probably going to do more of them in the future I just like those style of decks a whole lot. Anywho thank you so much for watching, don't forget to like the video if you liked it, sub if you like my grab bag of content and want to see more and if you have any sort of questions as long as they're nice and constructive I'll do what I can to respond to each that I see have a great day and you know, be nice to one another You know, don't be an ass <laughs> bye bye